So without a shadow of a doubt, the thing that people ask me the most on YouTube is about having hatchling snakes that are wiry and whippy and feisty and don't want to be held and new owners are worrying about them handling their snakes. How should they go about it and how are they ever going to tame it down because it's just so fast. Now then, in today's video I'm going to be handling my two new hatchling snakes and talking throughout about how I hold them and how to get them calm. Now, um, this method is sort of going to work for any sort of small, like, colubrid type snake, so corn snakes, king snakes and so on. Um, now, these snakes aren't actually any of those, but the method still applies, but I don't want to keep you, so let's get right into the video. So then, what I'm going to be doing now is actually taking Rusty, which is the name of the snake we're going to be handling today. Um, I'm going to be showing you me taking him out of his setup, which is over on the right. And then we're going to hold him in the plastic tub to the left. Now the reason for this is, as you'll see, Rusty is a young snake. He's very, very fast indeed, and I don't want him like getting on the floor if I accidentally drop him and him escaping. So the box is just a fail-safe, and it gives you more confidence when handling, which also decreases the chances of them wanting to run off. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. Now then, I recognise the lighting slightly skew whiffier, so after I've got Rusty out and I've shown you the preliminary steps to getting them used to handling, we'll move into a little bit of a different spot so that you can see him better, and then I'll talk more about handling them. But anyway, that's enough of an intro, so let's get him out of the box and I'll show you what you do. Now I will say while I'm doing this that um, I do recognise that there is like poo in this viv. But one thing I'll tell you is that when it comes to baby snakes, you don't want to be like disturbing them all the time, especially when they're new like these. So that poo will be coming out um, after I've finished filming because I am just trying to um, leave messing with these snakes to once a week. So all the cleaning, water changing, weighing and handling is all left to this day each week. But anyway, Rusty's probably going to be in here, so let's try and take him out. Now what he'll probably do is he'll wake up and realise I'm here and then decide he's quite scared and then he'll try and get off from me what I'm predicting okay Rusty, are you okay? now you see what I'm doing there is I'm just handling him gently he's trying to get away there and what I could do is panic and try and bring him closer to me body but there is just no point in like panicking when he's getting a little bit flighty like that, see so he's trying to get away, but he's, he's actually been much better than he was last week, but anyway, um, let's change position and I'll show you what you do. So to pick up a baby snake like this, he's probably going to be quite whippy now because he's woken up. You don't want to grab him, you just want to get them lightly, okay there. So he could have he whipped away or whatever there, but he didn't, he's actually been really really good to be honest. Um, now, what you want to do when you're handling them is never ever grip them really tight. They can get away more easily like this if you do this. Um, but to be honest, as long as you're holding them nice and calm and gentle, you're not going to have a problem. Now, a baby snake like this, um, when I held him for the first time last week, he was maybe a bit warmer and he was whipping around everywhere. But all you've got to do is be nice and gentle with them and don't show that you're afraid of them get escaping or whatever or whatever because they're going to pick up on that and they will try. Now a little bit of a note on Rusty. You may notice um, that he looks kind of like a corn snake but he actually isn't. He's a type of snake called a Chinese leopard snake which not many people have heard of. Um, although I have made a full video about their natural history and taxonomy and so on. So if you'd like to find out more about this species, then I'll throw up a card about them now. As you can see, these Chinese leopard snakes really are beautiful and they so deserve much more notoriety in my opinion. They're really easy to keep from what I've like experienced so far. So why more people don't keep them, I just don't know. Now one thing that people ask me lots of times is like about snakes being quite defensive and nippy and so on um, and they're wondering like how do they pick them up? Well the thing is with baby snakes is they get afraid very very easily of big things coming towards them and that's quite understandable really because look how small he is on my hands and you, you know I'm just a big predator to him 
And really all you've got to do is do what I'm doing, which is take your cues from the snake. Make sure that like you just leave it to do its own thing. Don't try and budge it into moving because that will upset it. Um, you know, when you're trying to take them out of the enclosure, don't like be grabbing after them or whatever. Just move your hands in flat and if the snake's like defensive posturing or whatever, then what I'll say to do is like leave your hand flat to them. And they're going to try and nip your flat hand or whatever, but they can't get a, gri a grip on it. And if you just keep it still, then what I find is that they just get used to it and leave you alone and calm down a bit. And then what you can do is slowly just go in for them and it doesn't surprise them and they don't really react. And that is how you pick up a snake that doesn't really want to be picked up. And again, all you want to do when you're handling a snake like this is just, because it's so small, never ever grip it anywhere. Um, just, you know, use your hands as a platform and make sure to support most of the length of the snake. Once they get older, snakes do tend to calm down, particularly like corn snakes and colubid snakes like these ones. Um, as they get older, they go from being flighty and whippy and afraid of everything to just being downright curious. And that is why they are such good pets, in my opinion. So there you can see Rusty gripping me. Now that's nothing to be afraid of. I know people with like new snakes and stuff who've never had them before get kind of freaked out when the snake like wraps itself around you like that. He's not doing it too well at the minute but what the snake will often do is grip you really tight and the reason for that is not that they're trying to kill you and eat you which is what people say on TV all the time and it really annoys me. Like you know when people are handling, handling boa constrictors and so on and they go around the neck people go oh it's constricting me it's strangling me ah but it just isn't. The snake's just trying to get a good hold on you. It would do the same to a tree branch. Um, you see, if I just don't support him quite as well, he'll probably... Nah, he's just going to reach back. But what my corn snake will do, for example, is he'll wrap his tail around a finger, or he might wrap his whole body around my wrist and grip on really tight. And in that position, it's actually incredible how strong a little tiny snake can be. Um, but all they're trying to do, really, is get a good grip on you um, so that they don't fall off. Now I know some people are probably going to be wondering like the snake is whippy and at this point it'd be trying to get away and all sorts of stuff and Rusty would be exactly the same but it's just the way that I'm handling him that's keeping him like this. So all you've got, again I've said this time and time again but I'll say it once more is that you've just got to be calm with them and take your cues from the snake. If I start like trying to encourage him to move or anything or I preemptively think like see his head's near the edge of the box if I start thinking oh no he's getting too close to the edge of the box and jerk my hands the other way then that will upset him and he will try and escape. Okay so it's a little later on in the day now and we have got the second snake whose name is actually Chloe in memory of my first leopard gecko. Um, I've only just named her but that's for another video. Now then, I've got her out in this little box and just put her straight in here because filming getting her out from where she is is rather difficult. But anyway, as you can see, she does seem a bit more lively than Rusty, so she should give us a better example of what it's like to hold a snake that does not want to be held while it's young. Now then, taking her out of the box here, let's take our lid off there, place it down, um, and we'll get her out. Now she's going to wriggle straight away as soon as I get her. I know that. I can tell by the way she is. Oh. And she's been rather better than I thought she would be immediately. But once again it's a case of you've got to be nice and gentle with them. And they will reward you with good behaviour. Now since actually having Rusty out in this very same box. Um, both boxes actually. I have disinfected them to get rid of any of the scents and smells. So that basically this snake here, when she is being held, she's going to ostensibly like imprint on me, on my scent while we're handling her, rather than thinking about the male, um, which could stress her out a bit. And she's just going to, you know, when she comes out, she gets used to my scent, my sights, my sounds, and so on. Um, and so she's not like getting confused by all of her scents and stuff. As you can see, she is rather adventurous, moving rather a bit more than Rusty was. 
And you'll also notice that she does have a different colour. Now I do know that the lighting is particularly different here. Um, so it does cast a different thing on her. But you can see the variation in these Chinese leopard snakes. How rusty was the more, well, rusty colour. And she's more of a brown. Now back to focusing purely on the handling aspect. Um, I would recommend, like, you may have heard me say at the start of the video that I'm only handling these snakes once a week. And personally, that's all I believe is required. People often go on about, like, handling them every single day and all that. But that is just counterproductive. They don't need to be handled that often to learn that you aren't a threat. Um, as long as you're handling them once a week for short 10-15 minute periods, a lot of their growing up, is going to take out any flightiness in them and then of course as they're getting used to you that it'll go away as well. I would also like to say that it's like it's not a good idea to handle them as often as every day. I mean it can be done and I did that with my first corn snake but I would sort of suggest now that perhaps it's too often to handle them every day. Um, it's better to just, you know, a whilst they're getting used, once a week is fine. And then, you know, as they get more and more used to you, you can increase the frequency. Maybe handling them like three, four times a week or something. But honestly, it does depend on the individual snake. Um, if they're eating well and whatever and they aren't too afraid, you'll be fine. Now, Chloe here is starting to get far more adventurous and is trying to escape the box. Um, but she's only she's only calm, so there's no reason for me to get afraid. If you're new to handling snakes, you might be like a bit worried about this, like, oh, it's trying to get away from me and all that. And I can see where you're coming from, but it's not. This is just what snakes are like. She can probably smell different things, like on this worktop I'm on right now. Um, I do like prepare food for the other reptiles, so she can possibly smell some of that. Um, I mean, as I say, the box is all clean, washed out and whatever, so I don't really know, maybe she's just exploring, but whatever the case, she's not doing anything wrong and you shouldn't be put off if your snake's acting like this. It's all just a case of handling them slowly, let them go in where they want, and just supporting the body weight. Now last week these snakes when I held them for the first time were a lot whippier than this, particularly Chloe, I was quite struggling to hold on to her, but I will say that if your snake is trying to get away, you never ever like grab them, like I'm not putting pressure on there, you can see she can just squeeze through, not even squeeze, just like go straight through it, and then what you never ever do when you're handling any snake is like go to approach them by the head because they don't like that. She's actually been really good with that, to be honest, but what they'll usually do is they'll shrink away, and we call this being head shy. Some snakes are more head shy than others. Um, so, for example, my corn snake is not very head shy whatsoever, because I've had him for so many years, and he's gotten used to me and so on. But new snakes especially can be very afraid of being touched by the head, because it, you've, got, you've really got to remember the fact that their head is their only defence. The rest of the body is basically just food for a predator. The head's the only bit they can protect themselves with because they've got no claws or anything. Because, you know, snakes. Um, so you want to leave the head alone and they will feel secure knowing that they've got their defence intact. Of course, as you can see, Chloe's being really good and really well mannered. And... How much of this is down to me and how much of this is down to her, I don't know. But given how wriggly she was last week, I'd like to say that it's just a case of already after one handling session, she's getting more used. And also, because I've had it quite, quite a few years experience handling young snakes, um, that it's a lot of the way that I'm just being calm with her. And that's all you've got to do as well. Now then, as, as we've given um, Chloe a reasonable handle here, um, I am going to go and put her back in her enclosure. I'll clean the poo out of hers as well, clean the water dish um, and give her a way in. But like I say, once again, it's all about just once a week, short, 5, 10 minute, 15 minute tops handles, being really calm with them, not approaching them by the head. If they're getting hissy or whatever, just be calm and slow. There's no reason to be, you know, excited about anything. Just let them get on with it and enjoy it while you do it. And so that brings us to the end of the video. 
So, um, I know that I switched rooms and stuff a bit so the wallpaper changed and all that, but um, hopefully you enjoyed this video and learnt a bit about handling hatchling snakes. As you can see, there isn't really much to it, as long as you're gentle, um, you do things like regularly, so once a week, on a schedule, your snake is going to eventually grow to the Pontane and so on, unless it's like a really weird snake. But anyway, so if you did enjoy this video and would like to see more videos about snakes, other reptiles and particularly keeping them in bioactive and naturalistic enclosures, then do hit the subscribe button and let me know what you'd like to see in the next video down in the comments section. So I'll see you then, bye guys!